and he, I think today was his fifth day. So it was basically, you know, any questions he had, we just, we just addressed any questions he had over the scriptures and um, let the spirit flow. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah, he was telling me, um, the brother Sia, you know what I'm saying? How just, how beautiful it is to, to be able to talk to like a new brother, you know what I'm saying? To build him up in the faith. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful, bro. Just sent the link. I sent the chat to him. I just shot him a text. He's gonna jump on with us, Lord's will. Um, yeah, man, that's heavy stuff, bro. It's it's crazy because I had watched that that documentary, and then see it has sent what he said. So I got a chance to watch that documentary and um. The one that I sent to the chat and then watched the one Sia sent where it was going into basically uh, Pilot, you know what I'm saying? His his, his his testimony, his story behind it, his count to what had happened. And um, they kind of go together, you know what I'm saying? Because the results of 70 AD, or what happened in 70 AD, I should say, is basically the result of constant rebellion and then, you know, what they did to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, man. See, see that that was something that the camps. I don't. I believe, in my opinion, they didn't know how heavy the prophecies of seventy A.D. was in the old, and then how Christ was bringing out the warning before it did come, because the old covenant, even in the Torah, was even warning people about that judgment to come because the Lord knew it was inevitable. You know, the Lord knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. So he knew 70 AD was going to happen. And 70 AD, we have to remember, was the Lord's vengeance. That was his vengeance on Israel. That wasn't something that Esau or, or Japheth, whoever you think those nations were, they took it upon themselves. No, that was the Lord's judgment. The Lord let that go down. So that's when the scriptures talk about which you can confuse with a lot of end times prophecy, but it was really talking about the end. It was talking about an end, but the end to Jerusalem as the Lord city. Because in Deuteronomy 12, the Lord tells us that the Lord will present a city for Israel to do all their feast days and sacrifices and where the temple would be in his presence. But you know, when Christ comes on the scene, is basically their last indignate the God God's last warning of indignation <clears throat> when he goes into Jerusalem, Jerusalem city that murders the prophets. So that was like it. That was the finale. That was the Lord letting them know that forty years down the line, this this that was Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is not in our time. Jacob's trouble was seventy A.D. because you're talking about a seven year consistent just annihilation of the whole city of Jerusalem, the city, the temple, the people. And that's why those who were born again in 30 AD on Pentecost, the spirit put an unction in them to get out of Jerusalem. And a lot of those poor believers that were Israelites in Christ that couldn't afford to get out. That's where the heathens came in. And you read scriptures like Romans 15 where the heathen converts they helped a lot of those Israelites who couldn't afford to leave, get out of Jerusalem before 70 AD happened. So, so it was like a perfect plan. But them, them camp leaders and them camp teachings were, were, you know, they stayed away from the 70 AD prophecies because they didn't know a lot of those things were for 70 AD. And they applied a lot of the prophecies for 70 AD to the end days. They applied the book of Revelation to the end times. And the book of Revelation tells you in the first chapter, it was specifically for those seven churches that was in Asia Minor that that had to be aware of what was about to go down in that time. So from some 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 notated 63 AD to 70 AD, which is a seven years, or some say it's 66 AD to 73 AD, which is still seven years. And that was the time of the Lord's wrath. That was the wrath of the Lamb mentioned in Revelation 6. 
So like Harab said, you know, months ago, when your timeline is messed up, the other scriptures ain't going to make sense. So, um, yeah, man, that 70 AD was huge. It, it was actually under, under the second coming, man, I would say it was probably the second greatest prophecy mentioned in the Bible. It was, it was up there, man. It was in the top five, at least. Top three. Top three, yeah, yeah top yo, three. Yo, I, I say two. I say two because I mean, you got two, the second yeah. coming, or, or or the even the first coming, and then the second coming. You know what I'm saying so we top two. So yeah, mm -hmm. after that, yeah, I say the third because it's it that 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 handled like a lot. That dealt with like a lot. The dismantling yeah. of the temple, the dismantling as the people as you as you know it. You know what I'm saying? The dismantling of you know the the removal from the land. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like judgment on 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 wicked Israelites that you know basically you know offered the Son of the Living God up. You know, so yeah, that was, yeah that was and, they did, and they did it. How they did it, it. It wasn't even that they did that. It was how they did it. How they said, "Put it on us and our children," and they got what they asked for. The Lord definitely put it on them and their children. That's why when you hear the Lord says this generation, you know, all these things shall happen. And that's how this generation will be. And, and that always that never made sense because I'm like, wait a minute. What is a generation? then? is he talking about because he can't be talking about our time because that's more than a generation. Now it makes sense that the generation the Lord was talking about was the generation that will be around for 70 A.D. I think I yeah. think that's the that's one of the one of those major ah moments, you know what I'm saying? Ah, ah all Ooh. that light bulb going off into your head and you're like, oh, because oh. often you read the scriptures, right? And it'll say like, surely, you know what I'm saying? This generation shall not pass until all these things come about, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or you shall join me in a regeneration or it'll make mention, uh, even when you go to Revelation where it says the things which must shortly come to pass, you know what I'm saying? So, when you're looking at the scriptures, first of all, not having Christ in you, and then not looking at it, it, it with a um, looking at it with like a 20th century mind frame, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you, you're not thinking right. You get what I'm saying? So it would have to be reincarnation, right? Reincarnation would have to be real. It's talking about oh, them coming back. Surely, um, there's some of you standing here, and I'm roughly paraphrasing it. That shall not taste death. You get what I'm saying? And in mm -hmm. your carnal mind, you're like, wait a minute. They all physically died. So this is, you know what I'm saying? So what is this speaking about? You know what I'm they saying? They must be coming back. Right, they must be coming back. They must be coming back. But when you realize what Hamashiach was warning them about, again, was the destruction of your soul. You know what I'm saying? The second death, the, you know what I'm saying? The, the, so it, it was, it was... It was like another layer that was there that we just couldn't see. We had that veil over our, our face. We really couldn't see it. And then we had to rely on what the elders were saying. You know what I'm saying? Or what people who deemed themselves as scholars or leaders or, you know, uh, high chief priests or whatever title they had. We just kind of um, believed that. But something in your spirit knew that something wasn't right because it was making mention of this generation. You know what I'm saying? Well, what was what was heavy was we wanted to be the heroes of the book. We wanted everything to go down in our time for some for some reason so we can be the heroes. Like we was going to be the ones responsible yeah, exactly. for helping the Lord. You know what I mean? And it wasn't even that type of time. What we was responsible of after 70 AD was carrying on the torch of being those laborers that are few in the harvest being plenty that was our sole job it wasn't it wasn't learning having to learn mma so we can fight the white man and getting guns and knives and getting the army and 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 getting the crew together that wasn't it because all those things was fulfilled there was no fighting against the judgment of god anyway because when you understand 70 ad was god's judgment that wasn't the judgment of the nations it's a parable, Lord, it's a parable uh -huh. that, that makes mention of that. I, I was trying to look for it, right? One of the, the uh -huh. parables where it says, and God sent his armies to destroy the city. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, 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 and God said, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what it is. Surely they'll reference my son. 
surely there oh yeah matthew son. 22 you're talking about the the parable of the vineyard workers yes, the tenant farmers. yes 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 yeah, matthew that, 21 that, yeah. that this, is it 21 or 22 21 yeah okay so that describes everything to a t to a t like to a t like what a beautiful 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 um parable that the lord gave because it describes the, the destroying of the temple it describes the gentiles coming in it describes what happened to the prophets you know what i'm saying um the rebellion it describes everything bro everything um and also right bun you see how you have matthew 21 and then you have matthew 22 right then you have mm -hmm. he's given more parables so matthew 21 goes into that parable matthew 22 um, goes into more into some parables, right? Then you have mm -hmm. Matthew twenty three, where it's just the all out rebuke on mm -hmm. on on the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin mm -hmm. and the 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 the, 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 the mm -hmm. uh, Sadducees and the Herodians mm -hmm. and the, the wicked the wickedness, right? All out rebuke. Mm -hmm. Then Matthew twenty four, when they leave, he's like, oh shoot! First of all, like, damn, you know, you just offended the hell out of them, like, you know what I'm saying? What you what he mm -hmm. said. It, during that time had to have been wild you know what i'm saying to go up against those guys like the lord had to have been like so bold and, and so wild and he mm. said look tell us when these things are going to be and then matthew 20 this is matthew 24 he's literally laying it down like look none of these stones are going to be on top of each other like mm -hmm. this is all about to be knocked down knocked down so he explains it to a t and then to add insult to injury, you have the Lord saying, <laughs> <laughs> you literally have the Lord saying, like, look, like, render to Caesar's what Caesar's. They try to trap him up, right? Sh should we pay taxes? And he said, render to Caesar's what Caesar's. Then he also, in Matthew's, the fifth chapter said, you know, to love your adversaries, love your enemies, pray for them that persecute you. So now you have the Zakaria Knights in the gang rallying guys up to go on this rebellious, you know, rebellion. Um because of the taxation and you know what I'm saying to pick up arms and 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 go to war with the Romans, these people were fighting against God. When you talk about mm -hmm. Armageddon, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what's that Acts of Fifth chapter when he was like, um, leave these men alone, at least happily you be found. Why right, fighting fight against, against God. God? Bro, you, you I'm watching the I'm watching I'm watching the, the um the series, right? The documentary, you know what I'm saying? listening to it, and you find yourself kind of rooting for them, like, ah, get get them, you know what I'm saying, root for the Romans, but then you got to really check yourself and understand, like, yo, they're literally fighting, fighting against, against God, bro. bro. They're, they're fighting, fighting against, against the will of God by this rebellion that they're doing, because that's the Lord's army, bro. The Lord sent them in there um, mm -hmm. with a mission and a task to utterly destroy Jerusalem for what they had did. But the thing about it is these camps will have you in the wrong spirit. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that, that, that's yeah. what it is. These guys are fighting against God, bro. Like, they're talking about Armageddon. You you, you are active, actively participated in Armageddon by fighting against God. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly, brother. That's, that's the nail on the head. And that's what I tell everybody. I say Armageddon is not going to be Star Wars, man. Armageddon is when you fight against God. In, in everything that he represents. Exactly, brother. What's up, Sam? Yo, what's up? What's up, man? How y'all doing, bro? What's going on? Building. Shalom, bro. Peace and blessings, brother. Hey. Hey, shalom, mercy. Peace, Peace. love, hey, mercy, right? mercy to you, brothers, that's, man. That's the fruits of the spirit, <laughs> man. These guys are, they got, like, it's like they're allergic to the fruits of the spirit, bro. Hmm. I was like that though. Yeah, I bro. checked out that too. What you check out? I was checking out. I checked out that seventy AD earlier. I watched that whole thing, man. I, man, like like you brothers were talking about that. That was judgment in seventy AD, and the Lord, the Lord told them about that already, and a lot of a lot of people didn't listen. Mm -mm. So many words. when when the Lord when the Lord talked about because there was two endings in Matthew twenty four that people miss. There was the end when the Lord says, and then the end will come. That I was talking about 70 AD. Then he talks about the end when he returns the second time. So a lot of times when that's missed, you don't understand because a lot of people who, who I remember there was even Israelites, man, who didn't believe in Christ because of that Matthew 24. 
And they say, well, the Lord said he was going to come. The end will come. What happened? He didn't come. And what they don't understand that the Lord did come because that was his judgment. Remember, Revelation 6 calls what happened in those seven years in 70 AD is called the wrath of the Lamb. It's called the wrath of the Lamb. And you notice that every judgment in the book of Revelations is always in sevens because that was letting you know that it will be a seven year period that all the vows and all the plagues and all those judgments will have to happen. So then you have the seven angels. There was an angel for each year. There was a plague for each year. There was a judgment. There was a vow for each year because it did last seven years. And Jacob's trouble was the three and a half years, the great tribulation, which would be the worst of the seven, which would be the 42 months mentioned in Revelations 11. Because these brothers, I used to ask them, I said, well, wait a minute. This says there will be a temple erected. And remember, I'm in the zone in 2001. I'm like, well, there's no temple in Jerusalem now. So I'm like, somebody, somebody help me out here because I'm new in the scriptures. I'm like, so if it says that the Gentiles will have the outer courts, well, you need to have a temple to have outer courts. That's crazy, bro, because... Little did, little did we know, this joint already went down in, yeah. in, in, those, in that time period. Yeah, yeah. That's so the Gentiles did trample the outer court you ordered of, the, of the temple. That's heavy, bro. So now, when you don't have this understanding, you're reading Revelations, the 11th chapter, talking about, it, it literally tells you, it make, makes mention of the temple, right? And, and then it'll go on to tell you, like, um, like this is going to take place where our Lord was crucified. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and, and what they say to cover that up is, that's talking about America, Ark. That's talking about Babylon and not where he was physically crucified, but where he was spiritually crucified because they want to move the, the, the location. You know what I'm saying? They want to move the location. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, so I, hey, hey, I want to I want to say this uh, real quick, too. What, what you what, what you saying? I seen that clip that Joe, you both sent of them uh, guys in Boston. And pretty much, that's how everybody feel. Eh? They they were saying like they was like, well, uh, everything is wrong now. Everything is wrong, and then you know, like you know, everything ain't right, and all you know. So yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Ain't nothing that these apostles been teaching. Ain't nothing right. Ain't nothing right in these camps. But these guys can't never. They can't get that. They can't understand that everything that they've been learning is wrong. They 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 will refuse that idea. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah, no, because the thing about it, Sia, is, right, it's like, again, it goes back to them fighting against God. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, the Lord says in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, not to call nobody Abba, not to call nobody Rabbi, right? But you call somebody Rabbi, and we call you out on it, and you mad at us. You're not mad at us. You're mad at God. You're fighting against the Lord. So you mm -hmm. can't understand what the Lord is saying. So they have nobody else. Who, who are they going to take it out on, right? So let me read this too real quick, right? This is um Revelation. Well, look, look, they think, Zion, look, they think that uh, they think that elders can do no wrong. They're on a fuck, they're on a spell. They're on a, uh, they're hypnotized. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what it is, bro. That, it's that it's guy, crazy. That, the leader over there, he knows that he's, 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 he's um pulling the strings. So he knows that, that he don't believe that teaching. He don't believe... There's plenty of things that the elders teach or uh, that the apostles teach that he don't believe. He got his own doctrine off camera, but he won't never tell those guys that's underneath him. The guys that's underneath him, they just going along willy nilly, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's 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 what's happening over there. He just like like the scriptures say, Woe unto the um woe unto the, the shepherds who lead uh my sheep astray. If you don't, mm. if you're a sheep and you're being led astray until the end, you don't repent, then you gotta pay. You get what I'm saying? Um, but you got these shepherds, these heads, in in particular that they set up that they know that they're teaching bullshit. You know what I'm saying? They know um, that they're teaching lies and they're they're you know the scriptures say this or the spirit will jump on them to to reveal something to them and they'll just they won't say nothing to nobody. You know what I'm saying? They just Going along to get along, whether it's for fame, whether it's for money, whether it's because they're scared to leave the synagogues, you know what I'm saying? They're cowards or whatever it is. 
you know, but the Lord is going to have to deal with them. They'll try to, like, play crazy in front of men and get on the camera and say little certain stuff. But, like, we don't really care about none of that stuff because we know the Lord um, knows all things. He sees all things. He sees through your bullshit, even though men can't see through your bullshit. But the Lord sees through that. And we really feel bad for them. Like, why would you want to play with the scriptures? Or why would you want to play with men's lives? Or why would you want to hide the truth or... You know what I'm saying? The consequences for that is grave, bro. It's grave. It's, it's forever. I want to read this scripture too real quick. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how, not, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and has tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. So, even in the first century, you had guys who were calling themselves apostles with the real apostles around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to say the real apostles, like, but I mean, like, the men that really walked with Hamashiach. You know what I'm saying? Even during their time, they had men that were calling themselves apostles, and they just were liars. You know what I'm saying? These are evil men, satanic, demonic. You know what I'm saying? Leading men astray. Like, being in opposition. So, we're going to have that. This is what we have in this time. We got guys that are just in opposition to the word. And they're starting to show their little ugly heads, man. Their mouths are starting to manifest it. Like, you see these guys in the spirit. They're defeated. They're defeated in the spirit. They look like, they look sick, bro. Eyes are dark. And, you know what I'm saying? No light in them. Just, 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 what, what the Lord say, like, full of dead man's bones, bro. That's exactly Ooh. what it is. Dead men's bones, bro. They can't hear the words of God. You know, it's crazy, bro. It is. It is. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna go over this if we could, brothers. Matthew was that Matthew twenty one, Bun? Yeah, the tenant farmers. Yeah. I wanna read this because I think, I think this, 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 um, this, um. Parable, like man, it sums up a lot. See that 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 video, I, I just, that video of both those videos that we've seen. I really wish we could play some of it. I, I may have to go through it, like you know what I'm saying, to pick good spots and whatever. But those two videos collaborating together to show, you know what I'm saying, what happened in 70 A.D. You know what I'm saying, and and get like an inside mind of what Pilate was thinking, and it showed you the different sects. You know what I'm saying, and how the Pharisees were so money driven, and how deceitful they were, and how how and Herod, uh, not Herod, um, Pilate was talking about how these Pharisees and these sects had such control over these people, like they were like fanatics. And, and and from the outside looking in, you could see guys like the Sicarianites, right? Which there was a guy, one of the guys that was leading the revolts, his name was Alazar. You know what I'm saying? His name was Alazar, and, and they were called the Sicaris, right? But he was saying, um, Her Herod, not Herod, um, Pilate was saying he saw, like, the control that the Pharisees had on the people and how manipulative they were and, you know what I'm saying, how fanatic these people are. You see all these guys in these camps, the Genesis and the Sakaris and the ISUPKs, their leaders um, could do no wrong. You know what I'm saying? Their leaders could do no wrong and they will negate what the word says and follow these men to a destruction. But what did the Lord said? He said, leave them alone. Um, if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. And this is exactly what's happening, bro. And it's scary. It's scary. It's scary to to look at them, and just watch them fall into a ditch, basically. Mhm. Mm yeah. If you start at um Matthew twenty one, is actually starting at verse twelve all the way to the end of the chapter. Is really going into why, through like you said, parables, why Jerusalem had to come to an end. That's why it makes sense. Now, Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9 makes more sense in context when it says um, the synagogue of Satan, because that's what the temple was in those days. It was literally a synagogue of Satan. Mm. That's why the Lord had to destroy it. He has to destroy anything linked to Satan, man. Mm. So, so when you read that Matthew 21, verses 12, all the way to the end of that chapter, Christ is consistently pinpointing. Like when you read verses 12 through 17, he's clearing the temple out. He's whipping people out the temple. Then you go to 18 through 22. 
he curses the fig tree who were the Pharisees and Sadducees. And then when you go down to um, the parable of the two sons, it goes into um, how, how it goes into that. And then lastly, it finishes up in that chapter, verses 33 to 40, uh, 46, it goes into the parable of the, um, the tenant farmers. And that's when the Lord gives his ultimate judgment against Israel and how he said, I was going to lease the venue to others, meaning the other nations. So that whole chapter from verses 12 on down is an illustration of what the Lord <clears throat> said was going to, why 70 AD had to happen. Yeah, my bad, see, I didn't see you down there. You good, see? Oh, uh, it's good, man. I'm, I'm, it's good, man. I was uh, taking care of something anyway. I'm good now. I'm all right now. This is so. Let's start. Let's start. Um. Let's start here. Let's start at thirty-three, bro. Um, a bunch too. Just to add to your point too, from th twenty-three down to twenty-seven, it reads authority challenge. You know what I'm saying? And it says in uh, twenty-three, it says when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders and the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, "By what authority does thou, uh, that does thou these things? Mm -hmm. And who gave thee this authority?" So just it, it reiterating basically, you know what I'm saying? Um what you were oh, saying. Oh yeah, the whole the whole chapter, man, when he cursed the fig tree, yeah. that was them letting you know seventy AD that that priesthood of Aaron was gonna be cursed and everything attached to it. I mean, all the way from his him clearing literally clearing out the temple as a foreshadow of what was gonna happen ultimately in seventy AD. When the Lord kicked out all the people, all the sacrifices, that, that was what basically happened on a grand scale in 70 AD. That everything Christ did in Matthew 21, 12 through 17 is what happened on a grand scale in those seven years. Because the Lord's anger towards the temple in that city and those people. God. Um, this is uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. It says, here another parable, there was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it, let it, let, let it out um, unto husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit draw near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they may receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servant and beat one and killed another and stoned another. And again, mm. you want to speak on that? Yeah. So he's showing you every time Israel went off, you know, you, you what you got to liken this to is like a landlord and a tenant. So the landlord came to collect the rent. But every time the landlord came to collect the rent, there was always some somebody trying to intimidate the landlord who owned the land. So when the Israelites was given, remember, it says lease. So it wasn't, so the Lord is letting you know, I'm just letting y'all hold on to this. So the Israelites took it like if it was their own. That was the problem. They said, yo, this our land, this our temple, we built this. So when the landlord came, they had that same attitude. Like, yo, we don't got to pay you rent. This our spot. We taking up shop here. So when, when the Lord sent the prophets, because that's who he sent first, he sent the prophets, and then he said they beat one, they killed one, and stoned another. So that was dealing with the first people he sent before Christ, which was the prophets. They did it to Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all the prophets they persecuted. Go ahead. Real quick, this is Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, NLT. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stores uh -huh. God's messengers. God's messengers, there you go. They did it to all of them. So now he's going in order. Everything the Lord did was in order. So he said, my father sent your prophets to turn you from your ways, but you killed them all. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, also, too, I want to make this point, right? When you read the book of Habakkuk, 
the first chapter. Let me see something real quick. Um, so let me let me let me read this real quick, just to f f further the point. Right, it says the burden of Habakkuk, the, uh, the prophet, did see. O oh Lord, how long will I cry and thou will not hear, and cry unto thee of violence and thou will not save? Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievances? Spoiling and violence are before me, and there are they that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment does never go forth, and the wicked does compass about the righteous, wherefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Now in the camps when they read this, they say, look, see, the so-called white man. He's filled with iniquity. You know what I'm saying? The law is slack. He don't want to issue the law. Well, the law was never given to him in the first place, right? Initially, the prophet Habakkuk is talking about Israel. His complaints is to God concerning yeah. Israel, concerning the priests, concerning the ones that was given the law, the Levites, concerning the violence that was being done in Israel. This was his complaint, right? This is what he's saying. So now, in, fit, in the fifth verse, it says, Behold ye. So now this is Habakkuk. And this is another thing. I just want to say this real quick. Sometimes when you read the scriptures, you got to read when the narrator is reading, when Hamashiach, the Lord is saying what he's saying, when Habakkuk is saying what he's saying. So here you have ha the Lord asking a question. He's asking the Lord a question. Why are you showing me this violence and causing me to behold spoiling and grievance and the law is slack and judgment never proceedeth, right? So now look, behold ye amongst the heathen, I will regard a wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be sold you so. For lo, I will rise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadest of the land, to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful, their judgment and their dignity. Uh, dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, so it's going to continue to go on. But the 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 answer to what Habakkuk is saying is, look, I'm gonna work a work in your day in which you're not gonna believe it, though it be told you so, right? I'm about to bring the Babylonians through here, like ten the hard way. They're about to smash stuff, right? And this was his answer to. What he was saying, and Habakkuk, when you go on to read this, Habakkuk is kind of he got, he kind of goes back and like, damn, I'm praying to you, asking you for help, and this is like your answer. Your answer is you're gonna send the Babylonians through. He was kind of puzzled at the Lord's response, but as you go on this lesson, you're gonna find out that it's gonna make mention of in this parable the Lord sent His armies. So in your carnal mind, you're not putting it together that the Lord sent the Babylonians, bro. The Lord sent the Romans, like, that was his command, like, uh, I think that was Cyrus, when he put the spirit on Cyrus to, um, either f to free Israel and stuff like that, so yeah. the Lord is maneuvering, you know, through certain people, like, this is his, his, his ultimate plan, so I just wanted to add that in there real quick. Yeah, and, and you gotta add this too, because this prophecy in Jeremiah actually shows you it was Christ is the reason why 70 AD happened. When you go to Jeremiah 11, when you read Jeremiah 11, 17 through 23, y'all going to see it immediately that this was because what they did to Christ. This is this is the why the grafting in also had to happen. This is what we're going to read in Matthew 21, how the Lord had to lease the, the farm to, uh, to the other nations. So when you read Jeremiah 11, 17 through 23, watch what this says. Uh, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, verse 17. For the Lord of hosts have planted thee, have pre-announced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering instances to Baal. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord have given uh, me knowledge of it, and I know it, and thou shows me their doings. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. And I knew not they had uh, devised devices against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. So this, wh who's that in 19? Y'all should see who had this right away. Yeah, this is crazy, bro. You should read this in the NLT. NLT makes it even clearer who it is. Read 19 in the NLT. It is, this is going to be crystal clear who this is talking about. All right. So let's go. I'll get this in the NLT real quick. 
Um, this is Jeremiah. Let's get this in the NLT, right? Uh, bear with me real quick. All right, Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 17, right? It says, The Lord of heaven's armies who planted this olive tree have ordered it destroyed. For the people of Israel in Judea have done an evil, arousing my anger by burning incense to Baal. And the Lord mm -hmm. told me about the plots, uh, about the plots my enemies were making against me. I was like a lamb being led to the slaughter. I had no idea that they were planning to kill me. Let's destroy this man and all his words. They said, "Let's cut cut him down." So that his name may be forgotten forever. So, so nobody. That's why the Lord, the Lord wasn't taken off guard when they when they turned against him when he when he arrived in the flesh. They all he already knew according to prophecy what was going to happen. He was the lamb led by the slaughter from both houses of Israel, not just the southern kingdom. Both in seventeen, it says Israel and Judah. And they, and he was being led like a lamb to the slaughter. And this is what the people of Israel were saying in Jerusalem. Let's destroy this man, not men, man. And all his what? Words. So they didn't even want the gospel to get out that he was preaching. Let's cut him down so his name will be forgotten forever. So under the influence of Satan, all those Israelites, like you were saying, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, they all were under the power of, of Satan, which is Baal. That's what Baal means. Baal is just another word of Satan. Because when it says Baalzebub in the Greek, that word Baalzebub comes from the word Baal. Baal is Satan, the prince of demons. So all these cats were possessed by these evil spirits. And this was the ultimate agenda of the devil, to kill the Lord and to destroy his word. It tells you that right in 19. Check, That's nobody other than Christ. Check this out. Check this out, right? Check out the prophecy and wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, and how this was all foretold. And, and again, they try to blame Esau, right? Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 12. Let us lie and wait for the righteous man because... Uh, he is innocent to us and oppress us, oppress our, impose our actions. He reapproaches us for the sin against the law. He accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God. He calls himself a child of the Lord. He came to reprove our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burdensome to us because his manner of a life is unlike is this the NOT version or something like that? Yeah, this is a different. This is a different version. Let me just get this in the KJV because I'm I'm used to it there. Um, and the wording. Let me see. So let's stop here, brothers. The wording is um. Alright. So let me just switch this up real quick. Oh, come on, what is this? So this is, this wants to act crazy. So let me get this, uh, let me get Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. Two and 13. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, two and 13. It says, he professes to have the knowledge of God and he calleth himself the child of the Lord. He is made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us to behold for his life is not like other men's and his ways are of another fashion. He esteemeth, uh, we are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed. That's Matthew 5 and make his boast that God that uh, make his boast that God is his father. You know, um, this is also what he was saying, right? Uh, let us see if his words be true. Let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if, uh, for if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and he will deliver him from the hands of his enemies. When he was on a cross, you remember what Joseph 
Caiaphas and Ananias were saying to him, like, if you're, the, if you're the son of God, why don't you help yourself? Save yourself. You saved other people. Why can't you save yourself, right? And even the man on his left hand was mocking him, you know, saying, look, if you who you say you are, you have all this power. Why don't you save us? Why don't you get us um, delivered from here, right? It says, for if the just man be the son of God, uh, he will help him and he will deliver him from the hands of his enemies. Let us examine him with his, our despitefulness and torture uh, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his words, uh, by his own sayings, he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine and were deceived. See that? Going into what you said, they were deceived by Baal, deceived by Satan, led from the high chief priest, the Sanhedrin, all those guys who was with those wicked guys that was with this. It says, For their own wickedness have blinded them. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not, neither hope for the wages of righteousness, nor discern the reward for their blameless souls. So this is going into, this is a prophecy, prophecy going into um, yep. them um, putting the Lord to death. Now yep. jumping back. What, yep, you got it, bro. What was, the, what was the other one they used to have a screaming on in the corner? Remember, remember that Psalm 109.6? They used to say this was Esau too. Set a wicked man over him. Uh, I, that's talking about Esau. Set a wicked man over him <laughs> and let Satan stand at his right hand. See that? That's Esau. That wasn't Esau. Psalm 109.6 was talking about Judas. Mm -hmm. Judas was the wicked man over him and Satan was at his right hand. So all that was Israel. That's why that devastation had to happen to Israel, man. Because our ancestors were so puffed up and proud that they was Israelites that they took the dag on. Think about it. You you are property owner and you're leasing our properties. And imagine the tenants assuming or not assuming, thinking that the property you own is theirs and they're not going to pay you the rent they're supposed to pay. That's what Matthew 21, what your reading is going into. The arrogance. The pride of those people to think that what the Lord gave them was theirs. It was his. He leased it out to them. They didn't own it. You you want to go into that real quick? The Psalms 109? Oh, yeah. I think that's heavy. Yeah. yeah, Psalm 109, is the, that whole chapter is speaking on Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 that betrayed Christ. When you read Psalm 109... When it talks about, I think it even starts before, set a man wicked, set a wicked man over him. When you read Psalm 109 and you start at, um, yeah, start at you two. start at, start at two. You want to start at two? Yeah, start at two and it goes all the way down to about 25. That's Judas Iscariot. It's going to show you that. Go ahead. Psalms 109 and two for the mouth of the wicked. And the mouth of the deceitful opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about also with words of hatred. And fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries. But if I give myself unto prayer, and they that reward me evil for good and hatred for my love. I think it says too, like this was happened so it could be said they've hated me without a cause. Basically... This well, when you go to Acts chapter 1, when it talks about Matthias taking Judah's place, mm -hmm. it tells you, it actually gives you the precept of that Acts chapter 1 verse. It actually goes right to Psalm 109 he, that we're reading. He quoted it, right? Yeah, he quoted it. It's going to show you. Gone. Go ahead. It says, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him. And mm -hmm. let Satan stand at his right hand. That's Esau, Ock. Nah. <laughs> no, no. Hey, Ock. We're going to see. We're going to see this Judas. You, you know it's heavy, bro? You know how it says, um, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but yet yeah. uh, they drawn swords? They mm -hmm. say that's talking about Esau too, right? But just, just a couple verses before, it said, a, a friend had betrayed me. A man that I walked into the temple with. You get what I'm saying? Let me just let me see this real quick, right? A man that I walked into the temple with. That man that I ate and said, Esau wasn't this walking is, with the Lord. It, it's in this chapter. You just keep reading. It it's is here. No, no, no. Yeah. It's Psalm 50, 
55. No. It's there, but it's also here. Okay. It's going to say my best friend that I broke bread with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You so, ain't never break bread with no Esau. Esau. Right, right, right. So um, we go back here. We go back to Psalm 55. Uh -huh. We'll start. We'll keep we'll go to Psalm 109. Um, so it says uh, Psalms 109 and 3. It says, um, they compass me. About with their words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I gave him unto prayer. And they rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. And when he shall be judged, let him be confounded and let his prayer become sin. Least his days be few. And let another take his office. That's Acts chapter 1, mm. verse 1. Yeah, mm. Mm, that's Acts 1, 20, 20 they're quoting from. That's heavy, bro. That's Acts 1, verse 20. In Acts 1, verse 20, it says, This was written in the book of Psalms, where it says, Let his home become desolate with no one living in it. It also says, Let someone else take his position. That's Judas. Yeah, Acts chapter 1, verse 20. <laughs> For it is written in the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. Let his habitation be desolate, and let no one dwell therein. And his 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 uh, bishopric, uh, let it uh, let another take. Right? So when you read mm -hmm. it in NLT, when you read it in NLT, it says, Peter, continue. This uh, was written in the book of Psalms, where it says, uh, let his home become desolate uh, with no one living in it. It also says, let someone else take his position. So Psalm, about Esau. No, Psalm 69, which is the first part of that verse 20, is, is talking about Judas. Psalm 69 is talking about Judas. And then the second part of verse 20 is Psalm 109. That's also talking about Judas. What happened was those brothers didn't know that Judas was foreshadowed and prophesied of in the old covenant. Mm -hmm. So they just assume hey. it gotta be Esau. Everything is Esau. If I could say yeah, if I could say too, so um it's crazy. So like in this time now, if you're if so like you know how they be like, well we're Israel and we're you know like they they can't be like we're the Israelites and you know so now with us bringing this out now if you're not the Israel of God, mm. which meaning you're going to you're going to have a, a new covenant understanding. If you don't have a new covenant understanding, then you shouldn't be bragging about being Israel because Israel was cast out of uh, Jerusalem. Why? For what? Being evil. Now, if, if you're not the Israel of God and you're not in a covenant with the Lord in this time, you shouldn't even be bragging about being Israel, because now we're, we're finding out that the majority of Israel, they were against the Lord in the first century. And so that's why, too, when, you know, we, we watched that today uh, with 70 AD. The Lord drove them out of uh, Jerusalem. Why? Because they didn't. These are the ones that didn't listen to the Lord. All of them had got driven out of Jerusalem. So now in this time now, if you don't have a. A new covenant understanding if you don't agree with the Lord, it's just as simple as that. If you don't agree with him, if you're not in a covenant with him, if you're not really teaching about the uh, mercy on the Gentiles, or if you're not teaching about the Lord bringing that new heart, then you are of that evil seed. You're part of the evil seed that got cast out in um, 70 AD. So now in this time, we can see who everybody is by what they're teaching and what they're saying, by them being in camp. So let me say this too. So it's not a good thing being amongst the bulk of our people at this time. It, it mm -hmm. is not a good thing being in camps. It is not a good thing being in big groups. Well, the Lord tells you that in Matthew uh, 7. I love that scripture, the broad path. Nobody never reads these scriptures, but they tell you about being in these camps when the Lord told you don't be in broad paths. That that goes all back to the to the synagogues. Remember those synagogues? They uh, ganged up on Stephen in uh, Acts six and seven. So 
guys claiming they're Israelites, but then at the same time, they're not in agreement with God yet. So the ones mm -hmm. that are saying that they are part of the ones in 70 AD that got driven out, their ancestors got driven out. And now we're here in America and they're, they're still against the Lord. They're still against the doctrine. They're still against the, the covenant. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, real, I got this for you, Sia. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Uh, sorry, 7 and 13. It says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many... Hey, Zion. Yep. If, if, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And if I can say this, you never hear this scripture from guys. Like, things that we bring out, you'll never hear it. Because if you, <laughs> if you look at it, if you look at it, uh, Bun, look, the the majority of our people, they're without God. They're they're in broad gates. The the Sakari, the the the, the, the millstone, the ISUBK. So the Lord was letting us know, like, he's not gonna be in these places where it's a lot of subscribers, ten thousand hey, subscribers, twenty thousand hey, subscribers. You hey, see? Sir. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Hey, sir, I'm going to give you a verse. <clears throat> Just a chapter over, they never read either. Um, this is, I want to I read this in the NOT real quick. It's interesting. You got it. You got it. it says, uh, this is Matthew 7 and 13. It says, you can enter God's kingdom only through a narrow gate. The highway mm -hmm. to hell is broad, and its gates is wide for many who choose that way. Hey, brother, you know that scripture right there was a key scripture for me right there? That was a key scripture for me uh, coming out of the synagogues and the camps. That was key for me. That really gave me um, that gave me something to really lean on because you, you began to see it's not about everybody and all our people like that. Mm -hmm. So now when you go into uh, 70 AD and, and what we're going into, the majority of our people, they're against God. Cause look how they're withholding the, the false doctrine. Because hey. basically, we didn't just start teaching this. We've been teaching this for a while. And so they know that a lot of the things that we're saying is true. But it, it shows you how evil our people are. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead, brother. Hey, hey Zion, stay in the NLT. Can you go to the next chapter over? This, this verse ends all conversations and debates. What being the Israelite, what Christ says here in Matthew 8 12. Watch what Matthew 8 12 says in the NLT. Con, bro. So, Watch you, this. you get what I'm you get what I'm saying, bud? Everybody wanna be an Israelite, but then they don't yeah, really understand yeah, what I, happened. I get I get what you're saying and some after Zion read this verse. You're gonna see <laughs> I get it. <laughs> this is the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 12. But many Israelites those whom the kingdom was prepared will be thrown many. into Con. But many Israelites, Whoa. those whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You think I get it, sir? You think I get it yet? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know you get it. I know, hey, I know hey, you get hey, it. See ya. No, I see ya. You know what's heavy? Because we just read a scripture that you said really helped you, right? This is the scripture that yeah. was the nail in the coffin for me, bro. As I was in the camp, you know what I'm saying? T t 13 years, 12 years, 10 plus years in this camp with this doctrine, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people are like, yo, what happened? Why the sudden change? This, as concerning the Gentiles, this scripture right here was the nail in the coffin. Was the nail in the coffin. This is red lettering. Um, let me just read a verse up. Right, two, two verses up actually. Two, two verses Z. up. I right, start at what ten? Ten, yes, sir. All right, Matthew chapter eight, verse ten. So, so again, to answer any question of what made me, what switch, what was the switch from over a decade of teaching what I was teaching, the only Israel could be delivered. As far as other scriptures that I kind of was going into, but this one right here was the, this was the dagger, the straight dagger, bro, straight dagger, like, bro, what am I teaching? Um, Matthew chapter 8 verse 10 And when Hamashiach heard this He was amazed Turning to those who were following him And said I tell you the truth I, I haven't seen faith like this In all Israel This is a heavy statement to make bro 
This is a heavy, heavy, heavy statement to make because throughout his ministry, he's teaching, he's teaching, he's teaching. Now you have this Roman centurion who comes up to him, you know what I'm saying, and said, look, just let it be. You know, just give the word. I know that you possess that type of power. You know what I'm saying? He showed his faith, right? Verse 11, and I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from the east and the west, and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown out into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is no way around this. You cannot Israelite foreigner your way out of this, bro. There's nothing you That's can say about too. this. That's right, Zion. That's another one, too, for me, too. Once you really get into this, once you really understand this, the, the New Testament and the New Covenant and the words of the Lord, because that's all the New Covenant is. It's just the words of, of, of the Lord and what he's saying. That's all we're teaching. So, I mean, it's like, well, God be like, well, they're not in the New Covenant. Well, that means you're not with God, then. That's all that means. I mean, like, it, it's, it, it's not a hard thing. It's not like a doctrine we made up. It's just that the Lord commanded us to teach it and nobody else can teach it because everybody else is under the, the, the power of Baal. They're down to that power. They're down to the, the, the doctrine of Satan. So, so it's not a, it's not a good thing for you to be screaming. You are Israelite unless you really understand the Lord in this time. You, you get what I'm saying? So, so like when you understand what really happened in 70 AD and you understand that who has the greater sin because then when you go into Pontius Pilate it really shows you that he didn't really want to crucify him that he was backed into a corner by our people that was that was making him do that like he he had to do it so he was like in the middle but he still you know Pontius Pilate I don't I, you know he don't get a pass or nothing like that but the thing is he showed more remorse but he didn't want to put the Lord on the cross and then the Israelites they wanted to put him on the cross so now so check it out now the same spirit is in these guys in these camps now when they say hey we're not joined to the most high right now or when they say uh we're not in the new covenant oh uh are we in a new covenant it's like it's not a it's not a question you should ask you should you should be like yeah well I'm with the Lord, but guys got to ask all these questions. So most definitely these are the ones like the scripture saying, uh, Matthew 23, these are the sons of the ones that killed the prophets. Yep. They're showing you who they are. Go ahead, brother. Yep. Yep. Um, so we can go into, um, Philippians cause of what you said. Um, see uh, concerning what Paul said, you know what I'm saying? Because you may have somebody that said, well, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Because they, they hold to this idea and this notion, I'm Israel, I'm well, Israel, I'm Israel. Well, and look, well, said, check this out. Yep. I was just going to say this real quick. Well, if you're not the Israel of God, if you're not, if, if the Lord ain't in you, then you're not going to get what we're saying. Right. You're going to hate it. And, 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 you I'm, I'm, I'm going to double down on that. I'm going to go as far as to say, what did Paul say, bro? But then Paul said, Let, let's read this, right? Let's read this. Um, in Philippians. Um, let me see where I want to start at, right? Let's start at let's start at two, right? Because this is happening too. You got this guy, guys want to give themselves bishops and you know what I mean? Give themselves these titles and these names and profess to be people and and, and try to get you to to, to let's, let's let's let it let, let, I'll let it speak for itself, right? Philippians chapter three, verse two. Watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, um, those ma manipulators uh, mm -hmm. who say uh, you must be circumcised to be saved. For we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely mm -hmm. on what Christ Hamashiach have done for us. Uh, we put no confidence in human effort. Though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, indeed, if others have reason to uh, have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. 
I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew. If there ever was one, I, I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. So, so if anybody had anything to boast in, it was Paul, right? A man that was a Pharisee, a man that was circumcised on the eighth day. You got guys boasting in their, their circumcision according to the flesh. You know, you know, you they was getting circumcised on the eighth day. So that made it null and void. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a Pharisee or a Benjamite, a Hebrew, you know, followed the law, followed the F, F, followed that, and he said he counted all as dung. Let's read, right? Um. I so zealously and harshly persecuted the church as for righteousness. I obeyed the law without fault. I, and once through these things were valuable, right? Once though these things were valu valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ have done. It's worthless. It's worthless. If you boast in your human effort or boast in the flesh or boast in the fact that you're a Hebrew Israelite and you're not right with God, what purpose is it? It, mean, it means absolutely nothing. It's all in vain. It's all in vain. Okay, you're, you're a Hebrew Israelite, but you're pushing you're, you're, you're pushing the old covenant or the laws of Moses right. on people. False doctrine. You're yep. pushing false doctrine. Yep. You're lying to mm -hmm. people. You're scamming people. You know, you're, you're, hey, you're of Satan. Go ahead, brother. You got it. Hey, can you go to um, KJV Isaiah chapter one verses three and four? Watch this. This is this is this goes right with John eight forty four. Go to Isaiah one three and four at the KJV. God. Hey, so Bun Bun too. If I can say two, then they don't understand uh, Zechariah thirteen. When it talks about uh, two parts to be cut off, yeah, the two thirds. That, that, yeah, that already that already happened. And then how we can tell that already happened? Guys are not in the spirit. They're they're in the same spirit that they were in before seventy eight D. They were they're in the same spirit that they were against the Lord right now. They're against the new covenant. They're, so they're in, in that the same, same spirit. They in the same spirit they was in with this verse. Uh, Zion about to read. Watch this. This is watch I, Isaiah one three and four. Isaiah chapter one verse three it says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Ah, uh, a sinful a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers. There you go. There's John eight forty four. You of your father, his seed, not a physical seed. Seed of evildoers is, is being the seed of Satan. John 8, 44. So Christ was bringing the revelation that these Israelites rejected when they would read the book of Isaiah. You think they read that and said, huh, he ain't talking about us. So now Christ came and said, you know what? Let me bring Isaiah 1, 4 to your mindset. The seed of evildoers is the seed of Satan. That's not a carnal physical seed. That's a spiritual seed. And that seed was attached to who? To Israel. He said, Israel don't know its owner. Israel don't know its landlord. Going back to Matthew 21. Israel treated the landlord like it was their property that he was collecting from. So it says a sinful nation, not nations, a people, one people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, John 8, 44. And watch what else they're called in Isaiah 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. Children that are corrupt is they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger, they have gone away backward. This is before Zechariah, this was written. So there was a two thirds of the people that was cut off once the law came. Because remember, the law cut people off from God. Israel was cool. That's why when you read the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, 
and when Moses is mentioned, all the faithful attributes to Moses are before the law, before Exodus 20. Everything mentioned about Moses in Hebrews 11 about faith had to be before Exodus 20. That's when Moses was in good standing and the Israelites was in good standing with the Lord. It's not till Exodus 20. That's why you don't read nothing about Moses doing anything faithful in Hebrews 11 after the law came. Because what cut people off wasn't your nationality. It's what you believed or not believed with the Lord. So when Moses went to the law and led the people of Israel, because the people of Israel said, we want a man. We don't want God speaking to us. That's when the two thirds of the people started becoming cut off. That's when the trials and tribulations and the bondages of Israel started happening. Notice before the law, I was talking to Zion about this the other night. Before the law, the Lord rescued Israel out of Egypt by faith. After the law, which is not of faith. That's why these kids talking about you need both. How? The law is not of faith. There's only one at a time. So God rescued Israel by faith in Exodus 14, 31. But then when the law came, Israel kept going into bondage after bondage after bondage. That's why Christ had to come. That's why it says in Galatians 3, when faith came, there was no longer a need for a schoolmaster, for the law was the schoolmaster till Christ came. So then Christ brings out in Luke 4, 18, he quotes from Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, saying that he set the captives free and, the, and, and those that were oppressed are, are free. Then he talks about in John 8, 30, 31 through 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now we start seeing spiritual liberation. Now we're going into what Seir was saying, the Israel of God, because you know who was the first Israel of God mentioned in the scriptures? It was that woman in Matthew 15, where the Lord told, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, I was only sent to them. So why did he commence to continue to praise that woman and heal the demon off of her daughter? And she was a Gentile because that woman became what? By faith that day, uh, Israel. Israel. Uh, Israel. She became the Israel of God. Uh, That's how a heathen becomes a Israel of God by their faith in Hamashiach. That's it. Hey, let me hey, back, they hate let me that. Back they up. hate that talk. Let me back you up. They hate that. Let me back you up. Hey, Zion, they, they hate that type of talk. <laughs> oh, they don't. Man, they don't. They don't it. like that. They don't like that. Okay, so explain this because prior to knowing this information, <clears throat> how can this make sense to you, right? Galatians chapter three, verse twenty-eight. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, if you be, I'm sorry, and if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So this woman who he said, look, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How did she become of the lost sheep of the house of Israel? She became of the lost sheep of the house of Israel uh, predicated via her faith. Because she believed. Because she believed, bro. And it's telling you right here. It's telling you right here. Your belief in, in the Lord is what makes you Christ's seed. See? Sorry, Abraham's seed, but then you, you are Christ, right? Let me read this again. Mm -hmm. It says, and if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, right? And heirs according to the promise. Now, let's go to here real quick. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It's not talking about physical seed. 
right? Mm-mm. The Lord didn't have a child, so he didn't have no offspring. So it, on that side, on the left or on the right, it's not talking about physical seed, but it's talking about spiritual seed. Spiritual mm-hmm. seed, ye of your father, the devil. How are you of your father? Because you've taken hold to his doctrine, his teaching. You talking his language. You talking his talk. But when you have, when you Abraham seed, that's way of faith. That's way of your belief. That's what makes you a child of God. That what that's what makes you an Israelite. Again, that that it, the name Israel wasn't given to Jacob by Isaac. It wasn't given Mm-mm. to him by flesh and blood. It wasn't given to him by Mm-mm. a man. That was given to him of the spirit. So just like it was Mm-mm. given to him of the spirit, it could be given to anybody of the spirit. The Lord chose Abraham, a Syrian, right? And it was his faith that basically catapulted all this that you see. So it, yep. it's possible that the Lord could, he, you guys could be in the same womb together. And the Lord can take one one twin, you know, and, and exalt him. give Have him wrestle this angel and give him, you know, a new name. You know? Yep. So it's, this thing is of the spirit. That's why when you read John, the first chapter, it lets you know, not of flesh, not of blood. This thing is of the spirit, bro. It's a spiritual thing. So this whole covenant is spiritual. It's not well, you right, like so... You got it. Go ahead. You got it. No, I was gonna say real quick, real quick, sir. I was just gonna say Zion was right there. All he had to do was go to Galatians three sixteen, and and he spoke, and he thought he misspoke, but you spoke right, because when it says God gave the promises to Abraham and his child, notice the scriptures doesn't say to his children, as if it meant many descendants. Rather, it says to his child. And that, of course, means what? Christ. Yep. So Isaac was a foreshadow of who? Christ. Nice. You know, the first revelation the Lord gave me when I was with those camps 20 years ago, I said, yo, the Godhead is a real thing because the Godhead was foreshadowed in the old covenant. And they said, how's that, brother? I said, you had Abraham who represented the father, Isaac who represented the son, And Jacob, whose name changed, was what? Spiritually to Israel. So when you when you talk about these cats talking about the Trinity or these people that believe in oneness, hell no. We're talking about the Godhead which was foresaw through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those three being from the same family, and those three being from the same nature in heaven. So is 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 very clear. The Old Testament was showing you what the Godhead was. We didn't need Christianity to show us what the Godhead was. We didn't need the language of Trinity to show us that there was three in heaven because we saw it through the three patriarchs, Abraham representing God the Father, Isaac who represented the promised son that God would give him like Christ, and then Jacob's name being changed to spiritually to Israel. Why? Because Jacob believed the angel had a what for him? A blessing. And he believed if he wouldn't let go, he would get that blessing. And that's how it played out. The same thing with the Syrophoenician woman. She believed, even though she was a heathen, the Lord still had to bless her because she believed he was the only one that could take the demon off her daughter. It's the same thing. Abraham wasn't an Israelite. Isaac wasn't an Israelite. I'm sorry to break the news. That should be obvious by now. Mm-hmm. The, the, the patriarchs were a foreshadow of what the Godhead bodily in Christ would be. A, a bun too. And if you say they were spiritual Israelites, right? What we're saying mm-hmm. is if they're spiritual Israelites before, they can be spiritual Israelites after. This is what we're yeah. saying. After. So well, that- Jeremiah, Jeremiah nine twenty five. People say, "Well, where's this spiritual, cons- spiritual Israel nonsense come from?" I said, "Jeremiah nine twenty five. Pull up Jeremiah nine twenty five on the screen for the people, because I believe a whole ton of Israelites never read that the way they were supposed to read it. Jeremiah nine twenty five is where Romans two twenty eight and twenty nine. Paul got that from. That Jeremiah nine twenty five is the place in the scriptures where you see a spiritual being that God is looking for. 
This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 25. Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Egypt mm. and Judea. Oh, 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 KJV. Uh -uh. Get that at the NLT. Oh, no, KJV didn't do that justice. Watch this. Because this is where Paul got, you are not a Jew because you're, you're circumcised. You are a Jew according to the spirit. This is where Paul got this from, Jer Jeremiah 9.25. This is Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 25 in the NLT. A time is coming, says the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised in body, but not in spirit. Woo! That sounds like Romans 2, 28, 29 to me. A Jew is not one outwardly, but one inwardly, according to the what? Spirit. The circumcision is the spirit. So watch who's in this list in verse 26. It, it, let's, see, let's see who's in this list of those circumcised in the flesh, but not in the spirit. Also, keep in mind, um, circumcised without hands. Yeah, yep. Colossians 2, spirit. look at that. Um, so this is, so uh, 26, the Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, and the people who live in the desert in remote places, and yes, even the people of Judah, and like all these pagan nations, the people of Israel also have uncircumcised Ooh, hearts. You see how the Lord grouped Judah and Israel, both houses with the Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, and all other heathen nations. He grouped them all in there. Because like Seir was saying from the jump, they're not the true Israel of God. Because they're still uncircumcised in the spirit. Romans 2, 28, 29. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. <laughs> Colossians chapter hey, 2, I, verse 11. Go ahead. You want to say something? If I can add, yeah, I want to add that too. And uh, so now, and so now, what's happening now, like the brother read, when you go back to Genesis, it tells you that, that uh, Satan was cursed. He was cursed. Uh, yep. Um, so now, check it out now. So, what does the scripture tell you about the law? It says, curse. Curse if, curse if you're under that law and you can't if you can't hold everything in that law, you're cursed. Yep. So it's the same curse. So now what do you have guys doing? They're holding to what? The law. So they're showing you that they're cursed under the law, like 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 Satan was back in uh, Genesis 3. They're they're cursed. They're, they're cursed cut right off. now. They're cursed. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So now so now, but look, they're mad. They're mad because they don't have this understanding. They don't have this language now. Which this language that we're speaking is is not a it's not a a, a, a it's not a carnal language. It's it's not a Hebrew language. It's not a it's not a, a Canaanite language. It's not a Greek language. It is a language of understanding. Right. So, mm -hmm. so now when you go when you go to uh Acts 2 now, when you go to Acts 2 and Pentecost, like we've done lessons on uh the Pentecost, this is this is pretty much when the new covenant started at Pentecost, Acts in the second chapter. But before that, the Lord was giving power to certain disciples and he was healing certain Gentiles before the Pentecost. Right. But when the Pentecost came, that's when everything pretty much uh started. So, so now you could clearly see the ones that are cursed because they're holding to the law. They don't understand how how important it is for you not to be holding to that law. So by you holding to that, that law in this time, that shows that you're cursed just like the serpent. The serpent want to hold you to the law. It's, and, and, and like you brothers just said too, the the new covenant is the spiritual law. The old law was built on what carnal commandments. It tells you that in Hebrews seven, that this new covenant is not based on carnal commandments. So if so, check it out. If you're carnal, then you're not going to understand what we're teaching and what we're saying. So it does not matter if you're Israel in the flesh. It does mm -hmm. not matter because because check it out. If you're in the flesh. And then you're rejecting 
you rejected the Lord in the first century. And so now you're rejecting the new covenant. Now it doesn't matter if you're Israel with a garment. That doesn't that doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. So that throws that that throws that twelve tribe chart totally out the window now. That hey, throws Sarah. that out the window now. Hey, hey Sarah. Ahead, you got hey, it. Let me just let me just get one real quick, Zion. Let, just to back Sarah up because I want Sarah to see being cursed is synonymous to being cut off. So Seir was talking about the two-thirds cut off in, in, in Zechariah, but then that same curse in Genesis 3 is synonymous to the two-thirds being cut off. I'm going to read it to you in Romans 9, verse 3. Paul says in Romans 9, verse 3, this, this is what he says, Seir. For my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ. If that would save him. So you see how Paul uses cursed and cut off in, as the same thing? He's saying, I wish I can be cursed and cut off for them because the majority of them he knew was already cursed and cut off by trying to establish the law of Moses for righteousness. Mm. Right. So when you're cursed, you're saying cut off. When you're saying cut off, you're saying they're cursed. It's not right. two different things. Right. It's the same thing. Romans nine three backs that up, brother. Hey, can you read right, six, right, one? Yes, sir. Verse six, seven, and eight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Romans nine uh, six through eight says this. Well, then, has God failed to fulfill His purpose to Israel? No, for not all who are born into the nation of Israel are truly members of God's people. Yeah, just being, being a, a physical Israelite means nothing. Nothing. Like, nothing without Christ. Right. Nothing that's without what John, Christ. That's what John the Baptist said. He says, just because you're children of Abraham, that means nothing. That means nothing right he said, now. He said the most guys don't get to that. raise up stones. And then when you raise go to the right. New Testament, it makes mention of those lively stones. They think, they take that lightly. They take that, like, that's exactly right. what the Heavenly Father did. He told you, he warned them. He said, look, this axe is about to be hewed at the root of this tree. Mm -hmm. When you cut mm -hmm. something off from the root, you pluck it out of there. Right. So, no, so you no, have no. these guys. Uh -huh. I, I was just going to say real quick, brother. I was going to say, so you have these guys. And so what they're teaching is the the... What what did the elderly Tahar say? He said that the nations won't be blessed. Yeah. So we know, you know what I'm saying? So they don't even understand that Israel has been cut off already. By you not even understanding that, that shows that you're cut off from the spirit. And so the only thing you understand is the flesh. The 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 being exalted or highly esteemed in the flesh. That's all you understand. You don't understand that the majority of our people already been cut off from the new covenant. This is why they rejected it already. This is why they rejected it because they're cut off from it. Mm -hmm. Like like you the know, brother, like like we're going into. It's it's not because that they just reject it. No, they're cut off from it. So 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 they say, well, hey, the new covenant ain't here. Well, it's not here because you're cut off from it. That's why it's not here. So so it's not here because they can't understand it. You see what I'm saying? Well, so yeah, by them not understanding it, by them not understanding it, so it's cut off. So they're cut off from it. So by them not understanding it, it's not here because they don't well, have an understanding of it. Go ahead, well, like Well, like Romans 9, 3 says here, they're under a cursed covenant and being under a cursed covenant automatically cuts you off. Remember Deuteronomy 32, when the Lord tells Moses that he and his brother was not going to enter the promised land, basically saying they was cut off because of what they did at, at Meribah when the Lord told them to speak unto the rock and Moses whacked it before the congregation. So that whole law, the moment Exodus 20 came, the whole nation of Israel was already under a curse, meaning they was cut off. So now to go to Zion's point, when Zion brought up Matthew 3 and Luke 3, when, when John the Baptist said the Lord can make these stones into children of Abraham, remember the stone he's talking about is who? It's Christ. Because remember Christ said the stone 
the builders rejected has now become the what? Chief cornerstone. So the stone that the Gentiles can be was as long as they had faith in the chief cornerstone, which is Christ. So it wasn't just right. some random rocks that was on the, on the beach by the lake where John was baptizing cats. John was speaking because he knew that the prophecy of Isaiah that spoke of the, in Isaiah 28, where it spoke of the stone that the builders rejected was Christ. He's saying that when these Gentiles accept Christ, now they're part of that stone, which Christ is. See? You know that comes around. It yep. comes around full circle, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> we we went into the parable of the landowner here, and it led us mm -hmm. down where we led down Ooh, to. Oh, yeah, it's right there. It's <laughs> yeah, right in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, um, <laughs> let's, let, let's 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 circle back, right? <laughs> let's, let's let's spin the block here. Spin twice. Spin the block. Make sure ain't nobody spin moving. It scrambling around right um right so check this out right matthew chapter 21 verse 33 here another parable there was a certain household that was planted a vineyard and hedged it around about and digged a wine pressing and built a towel and lent it out to husbandmen and went to a far country and when the time drew uh when the time of, of the fruit drew near he sent his servants to the husbandmen that he might receive the fruit of it and the husbandmen took the servants and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. And again he sent his servant more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reference my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him and seize on his inheritance. And they caught mm. him. And cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Mm -hmm. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? This is a question that Hamashiach is asking to these scribes and Pharisees. They cut themselves, right? Because they said, they said unto <laughs> him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men. And he will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which will render... Him the fruits in their seasons. Hamashiach said unto them, Did you ever read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same stone? The same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringeth forth the fruits thereof. Now, Z, right. that's where that's where Seer comes in, because notice it says given to a nation, because now these heathen converts are going to become the Israel of God. The nation is still Israel. But now it's the Israel of God. That's why it says, I used to wonder, why does it say nation? Because I know we're saying he's going to give it to the Gentiles. Shouldn't it be nations? No, because the nation is still the nation of Israel, but not according to the flesh. Going back to Jeremiah 9.25, according to the spirit. That's right. why I said so, nation. So now, so now what makes real, real quick, see it, right? When you go to Habakkuk yep, yep. 1 and 5, it says, Behold ye, uh, uh, behold ye among the heathen, and regard a wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye would not believe, not though he told you so. The Lord is Whoa. quoting this. He's letting you know. He told you. Yep. This is what he's going to do, right? And yep. one more, really quick, right? Really quick, really quick, really quick. All right? Because when you go you to guess, Acts, bro. the 13th chapter, right? What did the Apostle mm -hmm. Paul say to these men, right? The Apostle Paul said, um, Acts chapter 13, uh, verse 45. 40. Start at 45. I'm going to start at 40, right? It says, Beware, therefore, lest that shall come upon you, which was spoken by the prophets, Behold, you despisers, and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it to you. 
It's being mm. reiterated mm. again. We went from Habakkuk mm. to red lettering to uh, what Hamashiach said to the fulfillment of this being in Acts, right? And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue and the Gentiles besought that the words might be preached unto them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking of them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And on the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city together, a uh, whole city together, uh, together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews and the multitudes, uh, when they saw the Jews, uh, sorry, and when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. There's that envy Woo! that goes back to um, provoking, the, provoking jealousy. the jealousy, right? <laughs> and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Lord knows what they mm, were calling that Paul today? and saying to Paul. Absolutely. You, you are today. Why teaching the other nations. You niggas are. going off. You niggas is cursed. Yeah. Curse these niggas. These niggas yeah. is Uncle Tom's coons. Right? <laughs> you see that today. You see that today. You see that today. Right now Come you on. see that, bro. Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it off from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, mm. we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light unto the Gentiles. This is Isaiah. This is a prophecy being fulfilled. That thou shouldest be for salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Mm. 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 Hey, Bun. So, I mean, mm. so is this safe? Hey, so, Bun, is this safe to say that the majority of our people that are teaching the Bible, they're cursed right now? Yes, they're cursed slash cut off. That's why because I tell you. <laughs> they're teaching the covenant of death. That's Paul wild, said bro. it. He said it's a covenant of death, man. That's wow, bro. That's scary, man. Our Father for delivering us Thank you, Father, for snatching us from the flame. Amen. Madness, bro. Yeah, hey, hey, you know what? That's that's uh that Jew four. That's the real meaning of Jude, uh the Jew, the whole the the chapter of Jew. Uh grabbing men out of the fire, a few out of the fire. That's what we're doing because the rest of these guys that are in these camps. You see them teaching the debates. You see them teaching the news, uh, the schizophrenia doctrine. They're cursed teaching that. The Lord wasn't teaching that shit. I mean, Salakia. The, the <laughs> Lord wasn't, the Lord wasn't, you know, like none of the apostles were teaching what these guys are teaching. The no, fear mongering. Right, the fear mongering doctrine, the Esau doctrine, all skin, second skin address, doctrine, skin doctrine. Yeah, Exactly. So we're seeing who's cursed and who's cut off. So what all we're trying to do, all we're doing, because we're doing it. We're not trying anything. We're doing it. Hey, what what my man say? You you either do or not. You either do it or you're not doing it. So we're doing it. You know, we're pulling the few out of the fire. From because like we I think we, we mentioned that last week or you know, the last lesson we did. Men are in the fire because they're by them being cut off, they're in the fire. By them not mm. believing, they're in the fire. You see what I'm saying? So by us bringing this out, it is helping men. It's helping us pull a few out of that. That's pulling men out the fire. Now, I don't mm. know what these guys are talking about when they break down Jude. I don't know what they're breaking it down. I don't. I don't know what they're talking about because <laughs> they are yep. the fire. They put people in the fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was we in uh, Matthew? What was that? Matthew? Uh, 21, yep. Uh, hey, you so look. At, you, hey, so, you was at 43. You was at 43. All right. Hey, if I can say this too, uh, brothers, if I can say too. So what we're doing had to be, it, this, this had to happen in this last time. Us brothers coming together. Uh, bringing this teaching of the Lord out because the new covenant is just the teaching of the Lord and his doctrine, his testimony. 
So this had to happen in the last day because it wasn't happening in camps. It, you wasn't going to get this out of camps. They don't have no understanding. They're against the Gentiles. They're against the understanding of the hell that it is a hell. Even though, like, how we wouldn't want it to be a hell yet, there is a hell for unbelievers. So all these things these men are teaching against that the scriptures are speaking against because they are cut off from the understanding. That's all I want to say. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Uh, Matt, Amen. Yep. Uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. Therefore I say unto you that the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation uh, a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whatsoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But mm -hmm. on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Mm -hmm. And when the priests mm -hmm. and, and the Pharisees had heard this parable, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. They back to their nature. Hey, back to their hey, killing. Buddy. Hey, but Zion, they know, they know like this new covenant is talking about them. They know that this is talking about them. That's this is why they hate this. They hate it hey, so much. Fear, fear. You're one million percent right. You know why? Because those Khazar Jews, those Ashkenazi, those European Jews, that's why they don't even mess with the new covenant. Because they know Christ spoke about them, against them. We the only people that want to hold on to Christ and perpetrate a fraud, like he was saying, Kwam Yasha Allah. Them European Jews, that's why they don't even put the new covenant in their, in their text. They know that Christ spoke against them. That's why they don't even mess with Christ, man. And I can appreciate that more than a cat talking about Most High and Christ and knowing you got the spirit of Antichrist on you. These cats are talking about Most High and Christ, and they still saying they under the old covenant. At least them European exactly. Jews, they let you know, oh, it's only Most High, no Christ. It's crazy because right. because the whole new covenant cuts that that old the whole like it doesn't even make sense. So like like you said, I agree. Like for you to the the read the old covenant and claim to believe in in Hamashiach. This, but to say that you're in the old covenant, like, what's the, what is even a purpose, bro? You might, you, <laughs> you might as well just be like a, a old, old test, old covenant, old testament, old one of the old. You know what I mean? Just put a um, yeah. put a uh, what's that yeah. little hats, little hats that they be wearing, bro? Yarmulke. Yeah, put a yarmulke. Put a fucking yarmulke, bro. Put put on the phylacteries. Put the law on your doorpost. You know, like, like I don't want to, I don't want like, to stand, bro. Right, right, bro. And then they say that they're not in the new covenant yet. They about to enter in. You're no, enter man, you're not with God, fire. man. That's what you're going to enter into. Yeah, not exactly. What the Lord you know, shed his blood these for. Camps, these camps say Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. They say Yahweh Shai like they mean it, man. These are the biggest frauds walking out here. Because exactly. why would you even put Christ on what you say in his name when his name is the new covenant? It's his blood. It's his spirit. Yeah. It's his body. It's his flesh. Right. What you're saying is that he's your he's your mediator, right? He's your way to God. This is what you're saying in your prayers, right? And your salute. right. But you but you're not there yet. You're not right. there yet, though. Right. But 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 he's you, this got this guy down in Dallas talking about the order of Melchizedek. But you 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 got your leader talking about you underneath the old covenant, the old law. Exactly. How, how is that possible? So he's not your mediator if you're underneath the old law because he has to be a Levite in order to be the high chief priest. These guys totally do not believe the well, word of God. You just bro. read it. You just read it, Zion. The Pharisees heard the parable and realized he was talking to them. They were the wicked farmers. That's what wicked farmers do, man. They ain't afraid to blaspheme. I had a cat tell me one day, yo, I ain't afraid to blaspheme Christ. I said, what? You know what I did? I hung up the phone because there ain't nothing else to say after a cat tell you that. Yeah. I said, you ain't afraid to blaspheme. I said, click. <laughs> the dude called back the other cat I was on the phone with. He said, why your man hang up? I said, why would I stay on the phone? 
Wow. You just committed that condemned unforgivable sin. Yeah, you just condemned yourself. Wow. It say, he that believeth not is condemned already. So you Right, right, so about. it's no arguing. Right, so it's no arguing about. if... Right, so it's no arguing if you're in the new covenant or not. It's, if you believe or not, man. It's not no, it's not no debate. And you believe or did. not. Look what they did with Zion Red. Look what they did. They're doing the same thing now. They realized they were the wicked farmers... And look what they wanted to proceed to do. Kill Arrest him. him. Yeah, kill him. Double down. But they but notice they wasn't afraid of God. It says they was afraid of the crowds. Because that was their milk cow. That was where the money was coming in from. Well, it's the same thing today. So the, that's what P Peter said. We rather obey God than men. These cats feared men more than God. It's the same twist yep. today. Yeah, it's yep. crazy how history repeats itself. It's the same yeah, exactly. Story being played. It's the same story. That's why. The, that's why the Lord can use these parables because it's the same story being played out. The same mm. story being played out. Men are doing the same thing their fathers was doing. Let's 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 let's, let's go down this. Let's go. <laughs> let's go down this real quick, right? Because, all right, we was in Matthew twenty-one, right? We say Matthew 21, right? And then Matthew 23 is the all-out rebuke on these Pharisees. And then Matthew's 24. Right, exactly. Yep. Hey, even in uh, Luke 11, too, uh, Zion. In Luke 11, man, Luke 11 is uh, heavy, too. Con. So you guys, you, you want to get into Matthew 23? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. We got some time. I, I mean, I, it's late over there. It's late over there where y'all at. I, 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 I'm, well, I'm well rested. You, how you feeling, Bun? Uh, I might have to tap out, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still I'm still tired from Friday night, man. I'm still tired from them, man. Con. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, bro. Um, cause Matthew, twenty, cause Matthew cool. twenty three. Matthew 23, we going to be there for at least an hour because that's a heavy chapter, man. Yo, so you know what, yeah, you know what we do? We know what we do? We'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll finish, we'll finish off with this then. We'll fi I mean, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll finish, we'll close it, we'll wrap it up and we'll come back and we'll start in Matthew 23. We'll do Matthew 23 then. Um, because the key, 24. the key to all of this is, uh, is, is getting men to see Major key points. Major key points will get a man to be like, damn. You see what I'm saying? So he that wins his souls is wise. That's all we're trying to do now, man, is pull a few out the fire. And that takes charity. So if you don't have any charity, you're not pulling nobody out the fire. You're pulling people in there. <laughs> hey, pull <laughs> them in the push them in the fire. <laughs> They don't care. You see what I'm saying? They don't care about what they're teaching. They're, te they're on the street teaching fear and destruction and the calamity. They don't, they don't realize that they're not helping anybody by teaching that schizophrenia uh, fear doctrine. That's not helping. No well, how's that helping anybody? It's making, it's, how's that it's, helping? It's, well, it's, they're making people, they're, it's making things worse, bro. It's making things exactly worse, the, the, the words of, of Christ is life. So the, the gospel is what uh, uh, the world needs. You know what I'm saying? The gospel is the light. You know, the words of Hamashiach is um, bringing men to so, Christ is what's necessary. So Z That's right. So Zion, if you're cursed and cut off, will you understand that if you're cursed and cut off? Will you understand that? No, you just you just you just blind leading people to. You know what I'm saying? And the definite blind trust leading the blind. That's it's, what that is. That's what you see. That's right. That's what you see. You see the blind leading the blind. You know what I'm saying? And our praise is that, you know, you're edified coming across this video. And, so, and you're led so to a and, and look, and so like like too, like I gotta I gotta understand this more and like you brothers, you, you brothers know. So we got to understand these guys that are teaching and they're highly exalted and they're teaching in these camps and the shit they're teaching um, and, and what they're teaching, they're incapable of really understanding what the Lord was really teaching. So they're by default, the only thing they can teach you is the old law and death and destruction because they cannot understand what the Lord 
actually was teaching. Is that fair to say? Can I can I say that? <laughs> is that is that fair? Is that fair to say? They cannot understand what the law is teaching. Well, so well, you got to look at it like this too, sir. It's not that some some of it is is they can't understand it because it's like what Christ said in John fourteen. They're not looking to understand it. Remember, he says the world can't receive it because it doesn't recognize it and is not looking for it. So if you're not looking for the new the new under the New Testament understanding, or you don't realize we're under the New Testament understanding, why would you have the New Testament understanding? Why would you? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Why would these guys understand something they're not looking for? Christ said they're not looking for it and they don't recognize it. So no, just just based on that, hell no, they can't get it. Exactly. Um, real quick. So that means that means your elderly apostles that like to do all these uh, walks and these these five mile walks, they're walking for nothing. Look, you you're walking you're walking and teaching men false doctrine. That's what you're doing because you're not giving men understanding. All that, all that is in vain, man. All that's in vain, man. Go ahead, bro. That, that whole camp doctrine, all that, all that's in vain, man. Everything is in vain because if you're not the Israel of God, then you're. It don't matter if you're the physical Israel. The physical Israel was kicked out of Jerusalem. Why? Mm. Why were you kicked out of Jerusalem? You see, because you're under Satan in Jerusalem, so the Lord kicks you out of there. So now it doesn't matter if you're physical, uh, Jerusalem. You you have to really believe. You have to really be of God in this time. It don't matter if you got a 12 tribe chart. Matter of fact, great. if you got a hey look, matter of fact, if you got a garment and you got a 12 tribe chart, you better run from those guys with those garments and 12 tribe no. charts out there. You better get away from them. You said it. You said it in a slang way, but what happened to them in 70 AD is what Zion just read. They got evicted. That's what the Lord yep. sent Christ to do, to evict them from right. out of the land of Jerusalem. That's right, so, bro. So when the Lord evicted them because they didn't pay their rent, they was the they was the ten, they were the tenants. The Lord yep. is the landlord. And notice what Christ says. He's not just the Lord, he's the landlord. He's the Eddie. boss over the whole thing. So when he came to give them the eviction notice, they killed him. They murdered him, man. Imagine that. Yes. You ain't paid your rent in six months, and then the cat who owned the property you ain't come to kick you out, and you going to murder him? That's what them cats did. They murdered the Lord because he was about to evict them. Because he wanted to let them know, yo, this is my dad's property. Y'all ain't pay your rent. Where's the grape harvest that we're looking for? You ain't got no grapes. You ain't got no fruit. That's why he goes into that same chapter, Matthew 21, when he curses the fig tree that bore no fruit. So now when the Lord came to collect, they had no fruit. And when he had to evict them, he they murdered him for the eviction notice. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to read this. Yeah. This is John chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hateth the light, neither cometh into the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So the Lord, right. yeah, the, the Abba sent his son into the world. If you believe on on the son, 
you have everlasting life but if you you don't truly believe you know you're condemned and it's predicated based off your your, your belief you know what do you believe in, in well, these last days what are you teaching in these last days are you yeah. teaching the lord or if you're teaching the lord you're of god but if you're not teaching the lord you're not of god you're of your father the devil you know so so, so too yep yep and i i just want to say this i, I gotta say this so too i think one of the brothers made a statement so now what's happening is the lord is giving you these guys are giving you clues that they're of satan and you got to get out of there you see what i'm saying they're giving you clues like like uh, the flying high now, he said he told he told brothers in the new covenant to jump out a window. That's what Satan told the Lord. And then when you go to uh, this guy, he debated that statement. He said they're not joined to the Most High. He said we're not joined to the Most High now. So when are you going to be joined to the Lord? You see what I'm saying? So they're giving you clues to let you know that they're of Satan. You got to bail out of that, man. You know. Fuck, I mean, forget all that pride and uh, forget all that um, that high mind and all that wisdom you've been learning 10, 20 years you've been in the camp. You got to let all that go because your eternal salvation is on the line. Your your soul is on the line. And the worst thing, the worst thing to be doing in this time is to be teaching against the Lord and his glory. That is the worst thing that you could do. It's, it's the, the, the spit in the Lord's face spiritually in this time and say, hey, you're waiting. And the Lord looking at you like, what do you mean waiting? I, I, I came and I had the cross on my back. I fell, I fell down with the cross on my back. Remember when the Lord was uh, had the cross on his back and he fell down and he couldn't he couldn't uh, take the cross up anymore. And then the Romans made the uh, one of the one of the men help the Lord carry the cross up. So, so you, so you telling the Lord that he he didn't do that already? You see what I'm saying? That's what these guys are doing. So you you have to bail out of these, you have to bail out of the world, bail out of the camps, man. Everything is satanic. The wide gate is the gate is a broad path to destruction. I just had to say that, man. It's it's just heavy, bro. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing that we're doing. It is very beautiful, man. It is very beautiful. Go ahead, brother. Uh, Con, no, so we're gonna um, we'll close it out there. Lord's will, you know, we'll we'll be Con, 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 we'll be back at it. Uh, so we, Con, we, we, we pray that was edifying, which is always the purpose is to build you brothers and sisters up, man. Beautiful. Lord's wisdom and faith, man. Just tell your brothers to keep pushing, maintain the faith, believe, read, study, uh, watch as well as pray, man. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, to the next time, you say shalom. Shalom. Hey, shalom.